Honestly speaking, before working on this video, I was never the biggest Mesa fan because her kit and her playstyle both felt a bit shallow to me. So my objective was to not only make a good Mesa loadout but also one which is engaging to play. This section of the video will cover Mesa's different abilities in brief, my builds for her and her regulators, along with the different utility items I'm using to push her further. You 100% do not need to do everything I'm doing to succeed with this build, even in Steel Path. I'll be showcasing them because that's how I like to play her. Relevant timestamps should be provided in the description. Mesa's kit is not that intricate, so this should not take much time. Her passive provides her with a plus 15% fire rate bonus when using dual wielded sidearms, a plus 25% reload speed bonus when using one handed sidearms. There is also another bonus which provides her with a plus 50 final health when not using a melee weapon, but this bonus is too small to be relevant. Casting Ballistic Battery basically creates a buffer which stores all the damage dealt by guns. When this ability is cast again, the stored damage will be released. This ability has some niche use cases, especially when used with its augment for single target damage. But most Mesa builds will usually help in this out. One interesting thing to note about Ballistic Battery is that it is the only ability which can be cast while in Mesa's 4th, which can allow for some shield getting shenanigans. Shooting Gallery will stun 3 enemies within a radius every 1.5 seconds and provide a small base damage bonus to Mesa's weapons. The stun radius is affected by ability range, the damage bonus is affected by ability strength and the duration of the buff is affected by ability duration. This ability is an extremely useful crowd control tool especially when built for range along with its augment muzzle flash. Shatter Shield is Mesa's token survivability tool. It reflects enemy bullets and reduces the damage taken by gunfire. This ability does not prevent status procs and it does not protect Mesa from melee or AV damage. Since the projectiles are reflected off Mesa, if a rocket hits you, it will get redirected and you will receive the reduced direct hit damage. But if after reflecting, it then hits some obstacle nearby and explodes, you will receive the full AOV damage. The damage reduction offered by Shatter Shield is affected by ability strength and is capped at 95%. The projectile reflect angle is affected by ability range and the duration of Shatter Shield is affected by ability duration. Peacemaker is probably the reason you want to play Mesa. This ability locks you in place like a turret and you swap to her regulators, which are exalted secondary weapons. Hence the effectiveness of this ability greatly depends on how the regulators are modded. These exalted pistols have a fixed firing range of 50 meters and since this is a channeled ability, efficiency and duration stats both affects its energy drain. While firing, the FOV inside which regulators can target enemies is reduced per burst fired and you get a damage bonus each time up to the 20th burst. The damage calculation for the regulators is given by this expression. What you can basically infer from this is that when we are considering base damage, ability strength on Mesa has a higher weightage than the actual base damage mods on the weapon. Also the augment for this ability allows you to move around while using Peacemaker at a slower pace. But honestly I don't like this augment. Primarily because it removes all the fancy animations from the ability and you can already move around faster if you cast Peacemaker during bullet jumps. Since we now know how Peacemaker works, let's look at the regulators build first. This is the main build I use on the regulators. As previously discussed, there are no base damage mods on this because ability strength on Mesa will already provide us with base damage bonuses. Using mods like Hornet Strike here will provide us with diminishing returns which we don't want. Galvanized Diffusion, Lethal Torrent and Enemic Agility are present for multi-shot and fire rate. Primed Pistol Gambit and Primed Target Cracker are present to provide us with critical chance and critical damage. You can swap out Primed Pistol Gambit for Creeping Bullseye, it's mostly up to preference. The crit scaling for regulators will be discussed more in detail later. For the elements I'm running corrosive and heat because of the primed mods and because these elements usually have good damage matchups against different health types. 
This is the main build I run on Mesa. It's a shield tanking build which uses pillage for shield region and to strip 100% of the enemy armor in a single cast. More on that later. Unlike most Mesa builds, I also like running relatively high efficiency as well since this build gets slightly spammy with the ability casts. Primed flow, equilibrium and feeding expertise are present for the energy economy and primed continuity plus narrow minded are present to add duration to counter the negative from fleeting expertise. The negative range is not that detrimental because this build does not rely on the range stat. When considering our helmet ability pillage, it is a circular pulse which starts at a radius and expands with a speed of 20 meters per second for some duration. Any enemy hit by the pulse gets 25% of their defenses removed, first shields then armor. And the stripped defenses are then returned to the caster as shields plus over shields. The caster and any teammates hit by the pulse are cleansed of all negative status effects as well. Here the armor strip scales with strength. The range affects the initial pulse radius and duration affects the expansion time of the pulse. Since the pulse has a speed of 20 meters per second, ability duration can improve the final radius of the pulse by a substantial amount. Meanwhile, the range start only affects the initial pulse radius and is mostly inconsequential. Hence, the duration start affects the actual range of pillage more than the range start. The ability can also be recast at any time to preemptively return shields from stripped enemies. 167 duration and 160 efficiency give us a combination of convenient durations on the second and third ability and the minimum possible energy drain on the fourth. Adaptation in an ideal case and when completely stacked combines with the DR from Shatter Shield and Overshield from Pillage to provide Mesa with approximately 560,000 effective shield points. Umbral Intensify, Transient Fortitude and Power Drift along with one Crimson Tau Forged Archon Shard are used to reach exactly 229 strength along with the Corrosive Projection Aura mod. The significance of this number will be discussed in a minute. As for the Arcanes, they are flexible. Arcane Velocity for the Fire Rate bonus and Arcane Avenger for the Flat Crit Chance bonus make the most sense to me to buff the regulators but you are free to go with anything you want. For the Archon shards, I went with 4 regular Topaz shards to buff the crit chance of my regulators. These can either be replaced by regular or Tau Forged Crimson shards with the secondary crit chance bonus if you do not want to invest in the new shards. On the other hand, if you really love playing Mesa, these can be Tau Forged Topaz shards as well. Or you can use no shards in these 4 slots. The one Crimson Tau Forged shard is a must because it enables our build to reach 229% ability strength. This is important because when using pillage, you need 400% ability strength to full strip enemies in a single cast. When used alongside corrosive projection, which already strips 18% of the enemy armor, you only need 328% ability strength. Here we are 99 away from our goal, 40 of which is provided by our focus school Madura from the sling strength node, along with some casting speed which is always a positive. The remaining 59% will be sourced from a utility weapon. Or you can just cast pillage twice, it's not that big of a deal. As was previously stated, we need to source at least 59% more ability strength to full strip in a single pillage cast. This will be accomplished using the Grimoire. Again, you only need to do this if you want to full strip in a single cast. Worm Invocation provides plus 4% ability strength for 20 seconds upon hitting an enemy with the Alt Fire, and this stacks up to 15 times. This allows us to gain the remaining ability strength. The Grimoire needs to be equipped while its Alt Fire projectile is hitting enemies to actually gain the ability strength stacks. The odd fire charges on its own over time but this process can be sped up by striking enemies with its primary fire. Hence to maximize this, the grimoire is modded for fire rate and multi-shot. Primed fulmination increases the AoE of the odd fire which enables it to hit more enemies at once. The rest of the mods on this weapon can be anything. The arcane secondary outburst is another way to buff the crit chance and crit damage of our regulators. Upon swapping to a secondary weapon, this arcane will consume all the melee combo and in turn provide a plus 20% crit chance and crit damage bonus to the secondary weapon per combo tier consumed. This bonus also applies to the regulators. Having to build combo while playing Mesa can be disruptive to her gameplay. The solution is Rauta, a shotgun which provides you with 2 combo per pellet hit up to a max of plus 28 per shot. To maximize this bonus, this weapon is modded for fire rate, multi-shot, reload speed and magazine capacity. Full contact and shotgun savvy are present to increase the chance of proccing impact. This is to benefit from the arcane primary accelerate. This arcane provides us with plus 1.2 energy per second for 10 seconds upon proccing impact on an enemy and it stacks up to 3 times. Like secondary outburst, this arcane is not necessary but it is an added bonus to our energy economy since we will be shooting enemies to build combo anyways. Assuming we are able to gain plus 28 combo every shot with the Rauta, we still have to shoot the enemy at least 8 times to reach 12x combo. Doing this every 30 seconds to upkeep secondary outburst can get annoying. To alleviate this, we will use the Ceramic Dagger in Karnon. We use Gun and Blade for the second evolution to provide us with plus one initial combo for every primary kill which stacks up to 100 times. Interestingly, kills from the regulators count towards this bonus.
Along with this, we use adapt reflexes for the third evolution for another plus 20 initial combo. Evolution 4 can be anything. The ceramic dagger is modded with corrupt charge and covert lethality. These bonuses give us a total of 166 initial combo, which is a 9 times combo multiplier. This means that you only need to shoot an enemy twice to reach 12 times combo. Therefore, using the ceramic dagger has reduced our combo building time by 4 times. The other mods are not needed for this, but I'm running a generic initial combo heavy attack build, just in case I want to heavy attack a high priority target. Since we are always over 6 times combo, we can perform a heavy attack once every 3 minutes to get a free plus 25% sprint speed and a 25% bullet jump bonus from the ceramic dagger in Karnon. The companion here can be anything. I prefer running a hound with synergized prospectus and repo audit along with manifold bond and heat modded on the companion weapon for AOV heat proc application, which makes tracking the topaz shard crit chance bonus easier. Tenacious and reinforced bond can further buff the crit damage and fire rate of the regulators respectively, assuming your companion meets the activation requirements. Also, the Adarza Kavart for the extra crit chance bonus is a great option as well. Let's talk about the crit chance scaling on the regulators. The regulators have a base 25% crit chance. Running Prime Pistol Gambit, which gives us plus 187% crit chance, we get 71.75% crit chance on our regulators. Now, once we get the full bonus from secondary outburst of plus 240%, our crit chance reaches 131.75%, which is a 100% chance for yellow crits and a 31.75% chance for oranges. After the bonus from the Topaz shards is tagged, plus 200% on my build, we end up with 181.75% crit chance. Arcane Avenger provides us with a final plus 45% additive after which we are left with 226.75% crit chance, which means consistent oranges along with a 26.75% chance for red crits. If I had used 4 Tau 4 Topaz shards instead, our final crit chance would become 251.75%. Definitely worth trying once it becomes easier to obtain these shards. To utilize the entire loadout, I have a suggested ability rotation. First, you use the router to get 12x combo, which will be two shots if you are using the ceramic dagger. Then you swap to the Grimoire to trigger secondary outburst and then alt fire for Worm invocation stacks. Once you get the plus 60% bonus from the invocation, go into operator and void sling twice to trigger sling strength for another plus 40%. If the alt fire is not charged, use primary fire to charge it first. You can also heavy attack once every 3 minutes to get a movement speed bonus. Now you have approximately 20 seconds with a single cast, full script, red crit mesa who can melt through pretty much anything and is relatively tanky. Managing all these buffs is what made Mesa more engaging for me to play. And of course, you don't have to use all of these buffs. You can select any or none of these for your own Mesa loadout. The Mesa fashion was primarily inspired by the color palette of a revolver, because obviously it was. On a secondary note, the main reason I wanted to use the Rauta was because it looks stunning with Mesa. The utility it provides was just an added bonus. As always, thanks a ton for your support on the Varuna and the Saren video. While I was making this, I spent like 2 weeks figuring out the song and the shots I would like to use for the intro sequence and spent another 2 weeks to record and edit them together. Hopefully you can see the improvement in quality over my previous works. For the next showcase, I currently do not have any ideas but I do know that I want to try making the intro sequence with some mellow music. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video whenever it gets uploaded.